I am pinning a quilt today, pinning it to zippers. I use the zipper method to load a quilt to my long arm leaders. And this is the last one I have to do before I go to Boise um, to take to a client down there. But I wanted to talk just a smidge today about, first of all, thank you to all who sent me emails and questions if I was okay. I'm fine, I'm just kind of in the middle of a big dilemma that will take some time to present itself, I guess. Um, but today I wanted to talk a little bit about um, if you should buy a long arm machine or not. Um, that was a big decision I made. I was uh, 39 years old when I got mine. I've had it for about it was 2004, but I made a list here of a few things that I can talk um, as to the pros and cons of why I bought my long arm. First of all, I bought a Gamel. I have the Classic Plus. It does have a stitch regulator. It does not have a Statler stitcher. Mine is completely driven by me. It does not have a computer on it, nor do I load the quilting designs into it. There's a big big misnomer that all long arm quilting machines are computer computerized and that is not true. I physically have to drive my machine. The only thing that computerized about it is I do have an automatic or manual stitch mode and I can tell it how many stitches per inch between 8 and 12 stitches per inch. Um, so all my quilts are, are literally quilted by me. They're not set to a Statler stitcher or an automatic computerized um, design system at all and I push a button and walk away from my machine. Um, all 100% driven by me. I couldn't justify the price difference and we'll get into that in just a minute between um, a computerized basically a Statler stitcher or a uh, other computerized version uh, versus what I got when I got it because it was still really expensive. Okay, the pros, um, of course, um, you can work at home. I also have a degree in accounting, so I've worked off and on at different accounting, a staff accountant for a title company for about 13, 14 years, um, CPA offices, and then um, I'm still with a CPA firm here in my small community. Um, so I feel like I have the best of both worlds, and I've talked about that in a, in a different video. But because I got to work at home a little bit, and it was a good side gig for me, this machine has been a good little cash cow. It paid for itself uh, within two years, literally. Uh, there was about a six-month learning curve for me. I took a lot of classes. I traveled to different parts of the United States to take classes and... Um, train with the best I will say uh, and then after that I took my first customer paid quilt and I have never my rack has never been empty I have it it literally paid for itself within the first two years of me owning it and I will tell you up front um, this machine as it's set up was seventeen thousand um, dollars Gamel classic plus stitch regulator um, 14 foot bed I can do up to a California King um, it was expensive. I've never paid that much for a car. Um, and that was 14 years ago. So, um, uh, but it's been a good little side gig for me. So the pros working at home, um, I, like I said, I've never had any quilt. It's never sat empty. Let's put it that way. It's always had a pain quilt or one of mine on it. And I don't get to do that, that many of my own because I always feel like the customers are first. I have done every year, it's down there on the clipboard, but every year I keep a run of every quilt I put on here. And not including mine, but customer paid quilts, I've done over 1,300 quilts since 2004. Um, it's just been a really good little side business creativity releaser for me. So that was a good pro. Um, I can take this into my retirement. That's another pro for me. Um, it's a good little retirement job. You can do it at 2 o'clock in the morning. You can do it at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. You can come out and quilt. If I can't sleep, I'll pad out here in my pajamas and I'll quilt for a little while. 
Um, it's just been a really good little good little business for me and I've really enjoyed it. I've been quilting since I was in 4-H, so I should say piecing. There's a little bit of a difference in um, um, terminology between a piecer and a quilter. Um, anyway, um, one other really quick thing why I bought this machine over one that had a Statler stitcher available on it, a computerized model, is my customers wanted my artwork, my um, quilting on it, my doodling on it, my swirls, my L's, my E's, my feathers. Um, when you have a Statler stitcher, and this is strictly 100% my opinion, a Statler stitcher is all computerized. There's no truly I don't feel there's any creativity um, you can tell it to put a snowflake that's four inches across every three inches across your quilt you hit a button and you walk away and I just felt like number one that added almost fifteen thousand dollars to the purchase of a machine so you were looking right around thirty for a, a long arm and I didn't feel like I wanted to spend that I paid cash for my machine so um, yeah, I wasn't going to spend $30,000 on um, a long arm, and I'm glad I didn't. I wouldn't even change my mind in that in that respect. Um, just my own, pers my own um, personal opinion. I like what I have. I feel like it's um, not a computerized having not a comp having not having a computerized machine is better than having a computerized machine. Statler Stitcher or whatever version you're looking at. Um, I had incredible flexibility when my kids were little. I could run them to the dentist appointment. I could um, go to school with them um, in a, if they were having problems at school or, or um, um, take a week off for vacations and not have to worry um, about anything. I had, like I said, I also worked in an accounting firm and a title company and with my machine as my second side little gig, I had incredible flexibility. Go to soccer matches, lacrosse games, you name it. Um, you own your own business. You're your own boss. Um, that's been a big thing for me. I, I, it, it fits right in with my accounting background. Um, my, my minor is in business management, so it it just fit. It was a good fit for me, and I enjoy it. It's Somebody told me, do something you love, and you'll never work a day in your life. So that, that's, for me, it was a really, really good fit. Um, I have very little overhead other than the space it takes for these machines, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, thread and batting. Um, I, I have a small nominal fee for my thread charge, and most customers either bring me their batting, or I have batting for sale. So I even have... Um, What do I want to say? Uh, you know that those bases covered. I I really have very little overhead, and it's my business is pretty much all word of mouth. Um, I get quilts sent to me from all over the United States, and I finish the quilt tops and send them back. And um, um, there's very little overhead power, and then the space. But the space is a big one, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, the other small little perk is I get my whole, my batting, my thread, not my fabric because that's not the type of business I'm in, but um, I'll, I have two great big rolls, 30 yard rolls of batting that I store under my machine on a, on a specific um, raw, um, big round thing, any rod if you want to call it that, um, specifically for batting storage and I can fit three across um, my bottom of my machine. And um, so I even sell the batting, um, but I get it wholesale. So for my own, of course, I have to pay the use tax, but um, threads, batting, quilting my own quilts, that's just the little perk that, um, that goes along with owning a long arm. Um, now the cons. The biggest one I would say is you can't park these things on a dime. Uh, they require a special room, a studio, um, and upstairs. They're also very heavy. 
So moving them is quite a challenge. I have moved mine about four times and it's here. It's staying right where it is. It's not going anywhere anytime soon. Um, but the weight and the space they take up um, is a serious consideration. Because I have the four, 14 foot bed, the 14 foot table on mine, like I said, I can do up to a California King and um, I might have gotten a 12 foot bed, but I don't regret getting the bigger bed. It was, it, it came with it, whatever the head was the main part of the charge. So I'm okay, I'm okay with the 14 foot bed. Um, like I said, they are expensive. I was 39 years old when I bought mine. Had I been any older, in my 50s maybe, I would not have spent that much money. I probably couldn't have justified huh, that much money on a, I, I, it's not a hobby. I definitely make money at it, so I'm taxed uh, as a self-employed person um, and a Schedule C um, on my taxes. But um, they're expensive and they, they are big. You can't, you can't just park these on a dime. Um, and then the last um, thing that I think um, is kind of against these machines is because they're so expensive and they are so big, uh, people who move around a lot, it's probably not a good fit, even though you may love to quilt um, or do the quilting part, uh, you'd probably just stick to piecing most most of your quilts and then sending them out to a quilter, a long arm quilter. Um, there's also classes involved that you kind of have to stay up on. Uh, I taught classes when I lived in Boise. I taught ruler work. I taught... Um, how to use them to be certified to use them in a rental situation but for the most part I am so glad I've had this machine for as long as I have I've had very little trouble with it very little overhead um, I've learned to do a lot of my own maintenance um, it's just kind of common sense things but it takes the right person in the right um, living situation lifestyle to have a long arm quilting machine. Um, so those are the pros and cons. If you're leaning one way or the other, maybe this has um, kind of swayed you one way or the other. I do not regret ever buying my long arm quilting machine.